Thanks, Brian, for uh, for taking the time out of your busy day on a Friday. Thanks for coming out, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it so much. So, um, just to get started, um, tell us who was Brian growing up, and uh, how'd you get into fitness? Ooh. Okay. Wow. That's uh, that's a broad <laughs> question. So, um, pretty much, I I was there's a lot of different kind of family dynamics, right? So. Uh, especially in Huntington County, there's like baseball families, football families, rugby families, you know, it, it, it really depends on, on where you're brought up. But for me personally, I was raised in a martial arts specific family. So what that means is that when I was about four and a half, five years old, I was thrown into like a martial arts class. Um, and I trained and I still train for the past 25 years. So I, I've been doing martial arts for about 25 years. Um, and then me and my dad um, opened up uh, a martial arts school in 2003. Um, it's ASDC Martial Arts, and we've, uh, we're have we actually the longest running and largest uh, martial arts school in Flemington as well. Um, that's actually located on uh, 25 Minna Conning Road. It's, it, it, it's right by the Walmart in okay. Flemington. Um, so we've been over there for 16 years now, um, going on 16 years, and... Um, Back about when I was about 25, I'm 30, by the way, I'm 30. Um, so back when I was about 25, I was just kind of wrapping up with college. I had no idea what I was going to do um, with my life. And then I kind of got um, out of a bad relationship. Um, not, not a bad relationship in regards of like, I didn't like hate the person, whatever it was. It was just, it was more of a, we we had like a life planned out okay. and then that life just oh. like poof, oh. got 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 pulled from under me so i didn't know where to go because i i only in my head i only thought about oh i'm spending the next 10 years with this person or 15 mm -hmm. my, like my lifetime with this person right. right and then when it didn't work out i was kind of lost you know so i went through the typical binging you know um got mixed up doing bad things drinking low-level drugs, not high-end drugs. Okay. I, I never got into like ecstasy or anything crazy like that, but um, I got mixed up in the drugs and, I, and I've, I've probably smoked cigarettes for about 10 to 15 years at this point. In between there, like on and off, on and off, on and off. So pretty much since I was like 12, 13, predominantly because I worked uh, retail a lot mm -hmm. as like my second job because I, I taught martial arts, but I also worked retail. And if you, if you ever work retail, um, you get a sweet 10 minute break whenever you want a cigarette. So if you had three cigarettes in the shift, that's yeah. extra half hour. I mean, I'm yeah. getting paid to smoke. That's great. <laughs> so, so that's pretty much how I got into smoking was for that reason. Um, so then I got out of the bad relationship, right? And then I was smoking, drinking, going to bars, closing bars six days a week. Um, and uh, I kind of really lost, lost my way. Um, and then I pretty much had one night for me that, that was like the definitive turning point for me, which I like, not sure if I had alcohol poisoning or something of that nature, but I literally felt like I was dying. So, um, so you were your lowest moment at that point? Uh, absolute, hands down, lowest moment. Um, and I, I was literally questioning myself in bed, like, I think I'm dying. You know, just like my, my heart didn't feel right. Like I was drunk and, and a few other things and it just wasn't, it wasn't right. Like I felt like my, my blood pressure was, was slowing and started to get really lightheaded and I was like pretty much, pretty much blacking out, but not in like, oh, I'm gonna wake up in a couple hours right. blacking out. I was like, no, I think this like is genuinely, it. Like bad. Genuinely bad, yeah. Wow. Um, and then I, I did a whole talk to God thing. You know, I, I literally bargained with God. Okay. Um, and that was like right after I said my graces. It's and like I, I have faith, so I, I believe in God and everything else. And um, I don't judge people on their beliefs. Just don't judge me on mine kind of right, thing, right? right. Um, and there was a point where after my discussion with like myself talking to God, I literally started projectiling vomiting like aggressively. So as soon as I said like, I don't want to die, help me, I'm going I'm I'm to do something good with my life. I started literally projectiling vomiting I, like right after that. Um, Talk about weird, right? Yeah, weird, crazy. right? And that's and that's for me. That's why I have faith and I have religion 
is predominant because I was in that moment, my lowest low, I, I had alcohol poisoning, I probably did too much of something, and I, I felt like I was dying. As soon as I made that, like, I wanna accomplish something with my life, like 30 seconds later, I started throwing up uncontrollably for like three days. Wow. Um, and crazy. I was going through withdrawal, everything, for like three, four days, and it was, it was bad, it was really bad. And then so how'd you overcome that? I had so many negative emotions, right? So after my breakup, I didn't know, I didn't know what I was going to do. I had, because my whole career was based around spending time with her and building my life with her. She was out of the picture. So I'm like, well, like, what the, like, what the fuck am I going to do with myself? Yeah. You know, and that's, and that's where I, I felt lost. So I, I'm kind of self-destructive as a person. So when I go through episodes like that, I just take out my frustrations, my angst with alcohol, drugs, and just kind of get lost in it, right. you know? Um, it's kind of like, not like, I'm pretty much punishing myself. Mm -hmm. Like, like why, didn't I, why didn't I measure up or whatever have you, right? Um, and then after that three, five days, whatever it was of like being sick, throwing up, going through withdrawal, all these negative things, as soon as I was able to get up out of bed, I'm like, this is day one of my new life. So I took all of my anger, my hate, my aggression, instead of putting it into my nose or my freaking stomach with drinking or whatever it was, I'm like, I'm gonna do something better with my life. So I started going to uh, Planet Fitness okay. um, and I, I was training there literally three hours a day, every day, religiously. Um, and then I, w I was doing for about four months, and then um, I was I was still in college at the time, and then I would do two a day, so I would work out in the morning, and then I would go to class, and I would work out at the gym at, at college, and I was walking, and I was extremely depressed, super introverted, I didn't talk to anybody, I was just kind of keeping to myself, and um, I was walking from the gym, to my, uh, my, my last class of the day. And there was a CrossFit demonstration going on. And they had a couple boxes kind of like this set up and they had a little table. And, and my coach and my mentor, his name's Jonathan Burgard. Um, he's the owner of True, True Glory CrossFit in East Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. Um, he literally walked up to me. Like I wasn't any interested in CrossFit, no inclinations. I was just doing my own thing. I don't want to talk to people, mm -hmm. just whatever. He just walks up to me he's just like hey man how you doing i'm just like ah, i'm doing good dude and like i'm not interested right. like typical like brush off a salesman yeah. kind of mentality he's like he just listens like i feel like you're going through some shit i was just like it was weird and and uh i was like, kind of like got thrown off by i'm just yeah. like like that's weird that you say that like i, I kind of am but it's a little personal man like i don't really know you yeah. and he's like listen just by looking at you i feel like you need something different in your life you need something new He's just like, how about you just come to my gym, you know, just try out a class, see how you like it. It's, we have a great community, it's a great support system. I'm like, dude, like, I'm into the whole like CrossFit cult shit, you know, I don't want to be a part of that. Like, all I see is like YouTube videos yeah. and Facebook posts about how dangerous CrossFit is. I'm like, fuck that, dude. Like, I, I don't want to, like, I don't want to be You're a part like, of that. Don't bother me. Yeah, right? don't bother just, me. I, I don't want to. Yeah, just leave me alone. <laughs> um, and then he was like, yo. I give you two classes. Just come in, try it out. If you don't like it, don't got to talk to me again. But if you get something out of it, let me train you for a month. I'm like, no, I love free stuff. So I guess if I have to hate CrossFit, I might as well have a reason to hate it and like do it. Like, you know what? I hurt my back or you're like, that's so freaking gay or whatever it is. Like I can just like brush it off. Right. Um, so I, go to the gym with a kind of chip on my shoulder, like I'm not gonna like it, this is gonna be stupid. And immediately when I go in, everyone was welcoming. Like from the reception person to like every person in the class, there's like 15 people in the class, walked up right. to me, introduced themselves, like, hey, how you doing, I'm so-and-so. I'm just like, dude, I usually have my headphones in at the yeah. gym, like no one says right, hi to right. you, no one talks to you, or like if you're, doing something and it's like a little silly, a little weird. Everyone's talking shit behind Everyone's you. Everyone's looking at you, do your workout wrong. And they're yes. like, they don't even go there to help you. They just look at you and they're it like- They just ridicule you and judge you. Yeah. And, um, and there, everyone was just very welcoming. Um, and my, my first workout was actually, it's, it's a, it, we call them benchmarks. Mm -hmm. um, it's a workout called Fran, uh, which was my very first CrossFit workout, which if you know anything about CrossFit, that is 
like that's one of the major like famous workouts. Okay. Fran? Um, Fran, okay. yeah. So, um, and I did that, and I freaking died. Like, I died. But like what they were saying, like you were gonna go and die. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like literally. But I, I didn't die physically, but just emotionally, mentally, I didn't get hurt. Mm -hmm. You know. But when I was like on the floor after the workout, I just killed myself. It took me like 15 minutes to do the dang workout when it's usually like a 10 minute workout or like if, if you're proficient by like a sub six minute workout. Mm -hmm. um, but it took me like 10, 15 minutes to do it. And I was laying on the ground. And I had nothing but clarity. I was, I was like so relaxed and so calm that I had no aggression. I wasn't mad. Like I would work out and like do bench I'm like I hate that girl I blah, blah, blah. and I would just talk smack get myself angry to yeah. get through the workouts and I would still leave the gym and I'll still be, and I'll still be pissed right and doing CrossFit how you do it and how you exert yourself into the wad or into the workout yeah. it, it just has a sense of just clarity and, you're, and you have such an endorphin rush after it that you just it's just silence in your head like you can't think about if you have kids you can't mm -hmm. think about a uh, uh, an ex or a lover or uh, your work or nothing is just silent and relaxed and I was just like I'm getting this euphoric feeling without any drugs with, mm. without drinking yeah. without smoking without nothing and uh, feeling good. I was feeling, feeling, feeling good, good. I was feeling good about myself and that was for me what started my whole path um, so and you had like this epiphany at moment yeah. where you went to this gym, you tried it out, you felt like you cleansed yourself. Oh, yeah. And yeah, yeah, now yeah. you're like, man, this is, I love this. Yeah. Is that, was that the point where you were like, this is something I'm interested in? This or is something that I want to do. So, so pretty much I have an addictive personality. Mm -hmm. So I'm just like, holy crap, this is amazing. Cross it, cross it, cross it. Yeah. And I got, like, I literally went from being a critic of cross, like, oh, that stuff is culty, that's stupid, to actually understanding why people like it mm -hmm. so much. Because it's not only the workout aspect, but it is the community aspect right. to it. It's both of them combined. It's both right? of them combined. And also your coaches. I feel like that's a big, big Yes. Part of yeah, yeah. So, so what separates gyms more than anything else is the programming, like the workouts that you're doing, but it's also their culture and their coaches. And the coaches are the ones that develop their culture. Right. Right. So if your head coach is a jerk, like most of your athletes are going to be either pompous, egotistical, they're, they're going to be jerks, right? right? Now, me... I got into this to help people, right? So my gym is just known for being a very welcoming gym. You know, so when people come in here, it's just like, even if you're brand new, every person in the gym will walk up to you and, and introduce themselves. It's not like, oh, fuck, <laughs> there's right. a new guy, Johnny, walking in, right? And yeah. they, they, they kind of get wrapped in, like, I'm gonna show this new person what's up. It's like, no, That's like, awesome. it's That's like, so awesome. it really, it's about, building the community. So what made you want to open up your gym? Like, you know, so, you know that you're talking about when people come into your gym. Oh, yeah, know, yeah, yeah. members are now welcome. Side tracks. Like, I mean, I always yeah. do that. So. No, that's okay. <laughs> so what made me make that distinction is after my first month of CrossFit, mm -hmm. I not only was getting mentored by, like, uh, Jonathan, like, my coach, and him helping me through, like, my challenges with, like, accepting what happened with my ex, mm -hmm. accepting that I don't have to... Um, define who I am as a man by her right. um, and by her actions, what she did. Um, I really came to terms with like, this is what I want to do with my life because I was, I was completely lost. Um, and then I, and then I kind of came to the point where it's like, you know what? I'm gonna give myself a year. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do this for a year. I'm gonna come five days a week, minimum, maybe twice a day if I can some days. And after a year, I'm gonna open up my own gym. That that was my goal. So you had a goal, right? As soon as like you tried it, you it, were like, I'm gonna give this a try. That's it, yeah. You had an open mind and you were like, you know what? Let me give CrossFit a try. I, I liked it. Let's see now what happens in a year. Let, let's see what happens in a year. So I gave myself... So I, like, quick question. Like, yeah. So I feel like with that, you need a lot of motivation, a lot of drive. And mm -hmm. you, you know, you were going through things. And I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure those were kind of things that were igniting you to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But... If you had to pick one thing that kind of separates that, like, you know, if you put that to the side, like, what was that one, like, characteristic or trait that made you want to, like, I'm going to keep pushing, you know? Like, was it something, I don't know, can you talk a little bit about yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe yeah. something else? So, so like, like for me, I'm a very self-driven person. Like, once, okay. I, once I get my teeth in something, like, it's hard for me to let go mm -hmm. on something. Um, and the, 
what I realized is that as I was going through my experiences and, and really learning more about myself over the next year, I started to realize that like if I didn't have this support system like of like Jonathan and True Glory and just like my friends that I've made mm -hmm. there, like I felt like I would have been so far to like the left of just like continuing bad nature stuff um, that I realized like I want to do this for other people. Got it. So you, know? you would say that having a mentor yeah. was, a, was a big factor. Of, yes, you know, 100%. Go, like, you know, going in the right direction. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I feel like that's like, so when I do my research and when I'm online or whatever mm. and I hear stories from people that, you know, came from nothing to something, mm. a lot of it has to do with, yeah, you got to write the fine, you got to write the fine, you got to write the fine, you got to find the right mentor, yeah, right? right yeah, and you yeah. got to surround yourself around the, the right people. You, and that's the thing that happened when I got into CrossFit is that within the first month, I stopped doing all, like, I stopped smoking cigarettes, mm -hmm. which if, I'm not sure if you smoke, but, and if anyone watching this has, has tried quitting, like I've tried quitting smoking a hundred times, literally a hundred times. And within a week, a month, four months, six months, whenever shit got hard, I always went back and started smoking yeah. again. And uh, I haven't smoked in five years. You know, yes. thank you very much. Um, but I went from smoking a pack every two days to literally after my first month, I'm like, eh, I'm done. And that was it. And I haven't smoked a cigarette in five years. That's amazing. You know, and, and that's what CrossFit does. And that's what that, like the whole like, culty vibe from it, like, like the, the, the people give shit to CrossFit for. It's like, no, it's not really cult in the, in the, in the sense of that, like we all want to be like one another. It's just like, Doing these kind of workouts, it makes you want to perform better. It makes you want to just do better. So when you're doing these workouts, right, if I'm smoking, it's going to impact my workout. Right. If I'm eating like crap, it's going to impact my workout. If, if I'm staying up late, mm -hmm. it's going to impact my workout. And you start realizing that working out is not only your friends and your community and people you enjoy spending time with, but it's your outlet. Right. It's like all my pent up frustration, angst, anything, I would usually turn to a bottle and a cigarette. I just I'm like, all right, cool, clear my head, blast some music, and I just work out. Mm -hmm. I work out and clear my head. And right. that is where I've gotten to um, in regards to, to, like, to, to my training. Um, so going back to, to what I was saying before, I gave myself a year, mm -hmm. and I was like, I'm gonna do this within a year. Um, within that time span, I opened up uh, a side business actually in East Strasburg doing an, an, another martial arts school because I was going to school full time, working at uh, working for Zoomies actually. I was, okay. a, I was a co manager of Zoomies and I was working um, at my other my actual martial arts school with, with my dad. Um, I said open up a small affiliate um, in East Strasburg, Pennsylvania. Um, I ended up getting just like one student. Um, so it failed. It failed miserably. Wait, so you for CrossFit, right? No, 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 no. Oh, this is this is for martial arts. Oh, so for martial arts. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I opened up a martial arts school within East Stroudsburg, um, because I had a bunch of friends like, oh hey, like if you open, I had like thirty people say, yeah. if you open a martial arts school here, like we will train with you, because I've been doing it for twenty five years, and you know? I, I have a good rapport, I, I have a lot of credentials, and a lot of my friends always want to train with me, but they they didn't want to drive an hour and mm -hmm. somehow to get here. Right. So I'm like, you know what? I'll throw my hat in the ring, you know, I'll open up a uh, martial arts school in this area because I have 30 people. If like 30 people, 80 bucks a pop, you know, that's, that, yeah. that, that, that's good money, you know? As a side hustle. As a side hustle, right. exactly. And then it was a, a complete failure. You know, I put three or four grand into it um, between promoting and licensing and because you have to pay to right. open up a business, right? And I got one person out of it. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna give it like two months. Two months goes by, none of my friends showed up, right? So that's one of the, those harsh realizations that everyone wants to support you with something with like, a, like a, an idea, right. but then when it comes time to like, oh, do you know how I told you I was gonna be there and like help you out through that? Like, I'm like, I don't wanna do that. So you know? like your friends were like, eh. Yeah, they, 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 they completely just phased out. You know, but I'm like, oh great, so you wait till after I spend all this money, wow open up this great spot, now you're gonna be like, oh yeah, well the times don't work for me. Oh, well this, oh, it was a hundred million excuses. Oh my God, left and right. Yeah, um, and then, but through that, I came uh, acquainted with, with this guy, Marson. 
um, which which is actually my my one of my main business partners with um, with the gym. And um, but during this whole time of the of the the cross of the martial arts school failing, I was still trying to develop my whole actual CrossFit affiliate idea. Um, so, because that started to go down, then my drive, like, you know what, this isn't working, I'm really starting to get more committed to CrossFit. And then this started kind of mm. interchanging a little bit. Um, and then I got to the point where I started getting investors. Um, so I started looking around for, for investors and like talking and just talking passionately. Because I'm a very passionate person. Um, and I was very committed to helping better lives. Like this whole monetary aspect of, to, to like this kind of business, it's like I, I'm content paying, paying for the lights, mm -hmm. but if I don't make money for another 10 years, I'm cool with that as long as I'm helping the people that walk in my door. You know, that to me is more prolific and more profound right. than any sort of monetary benefit that this business gives me. Of course, because you know, you went through that. You, that yeah. must have changed your life yeah. essentially, right? Mm -hmm. If I had to put it in, in simple terms, I guess. It kind of yeah. like made you realize and you're like- It made me realize my self-worth. It made me realize who I am, what I'm capable of mm -hmm. doing. And the, the bad habits and the bad choices I was making due to like a broken heart wasn't helping me, right? So at least I could take out my frustrations in the workout and actually get positive benefits right, right. to it. Um, so as I was finding investors, um, I had like three of them lined up. My, my brother was actually one of our key investors because I had helped him out plenty of times in his life picking up from <laughs> bars when I was a kid, so he owes me that. Um, but he believed in me and, and what I was trying to do, and he always said if, if I ever came to him like an adult and had a good business plan and gave him this and that and like actually like laid a detailed, a, a detailed business plan, yeah. and if it was good, he'd invest into me. And then I came out to him like an adult and uh, I showed him like, this is what I want to do. This is how I'm going to do it. This is, these are my projections. This is how much equipment costs. I did all my homework. Wow. He's just okay, like, so with that, you know, you prepared so much for this. You did your homework, mm -hmm. you did your research, you went to your brother, you pitched to him. Now you guys opened up your gym. Yeah. What were some unexpected challenges, you know? Oh, as, uh, as, you know as when there you was challenges started. even before, okay, before so that. So th th this, th this is where it gets a little interesting. So I got my brother as, as a key, as a key investor. Um, and then I got my, my one, my mentor, Jonathan was actually uh, a co-investor as well. So he actually invested, um, invested money into me to help me open my own gym. Cause I reached out to him and well, I started talking about what I want to do and he saw like how passionate I was. He saw how much I've grown. Yeah. Um, and just in his gym, he believed in me 100%. So he actually was one of my investors and I was short X amount of dollars, which was a lot. So it was, it was, the X is a lot of dollars, right? And um, I started reaching out to this one other person and they were 100% committed. Like, yeah, 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 this is great. They were a high level CrossFit athlete and they were all about investing with me. And then a week before it came to like, let's do, let's do some paperwork, like now nah, I'm out. So they like dropped it. So I'm just like, a week, uh, before, right? a week like, like a week or two okay. before we were supposed to like exchange money and get things rolling. So now I'm on a time crunch because I have to, I have all these meetings signed, like, like set up and everything like that. I'm just like, what the, like, like, what am I gonna do? And then I taught my last class at my martial arts school. Um, at my new one that was failing, like this one in Jersey is, is very successful. Okay. And the one in, uh, in East, right? In, in East Strasburg, yeah. Okay. So when East Strasburg is, it was failing, then I taught the last class and I sat down my student, Marcin, and I was just like, listen, bro, you're my only guy. Like, like I really appreciate your, your support, but this isn't a financially viable option because I'm not, I can't even pay my rent. Like the, the people I felt were gonna invest time into me and the money into me to like train with me they're not doing it you know and i'm, I'm not gonna i don't beg like i'm a, I'm a very prideful right. person like I'm, I'm not gonna beg you to want to work out with me i want you to be training because you want to be there um and then i was like yeah and like i'm doing this whole crossfit thing and like one of my investors dropped out and he's just like oh really i'm just like yeah you know so like i'm really stressed out because i need i need x amount of money and then he's just like I'll give it to you. And I look at him, it's like, what do you mean you'll give it to me? Just like that, he just said, I'll give it to you. Yeah, okay. and he's just like, I have money. I'm like, dude, you're the same age as me. How the hell do you have X amount of dollars? He's like, I'm good at saving. 
and I look at them, I'm just like, like, and, and keep on, we're not really, we're like acquaintances, we're not really right. friends, got it, got it. you know, so I'm just like, really, he's just like, yeah, he's like, I, I love what you do with me here, and like, I can tell by your passion that like, like, it's going to be successful, like, like, I want to be a part of it, I was like, you sure? He's like, yeah, I'm like, all right, and then he, he cut me a check. Wow. And that's one of the key things for me, like one of those prolific moments is that I had everything going right, hit a huge speed bump and started tanking again. I'm like, what the hell am I going to do? But through a, a failure, I got something out of it. Right. So I don't see my martial arts school in East Stroudsburg as being a failure. I see it as a growing opportunity to meet one of like an, a key investor for me. Right. You know, so within that failure, I actually got what I needed to actually pursue what I actually wanted to do. Um, so like, that's kind of like that, um, that motto that, um, oh, I can't even remember his name right now, but he's like, it's like fail fast and fail forward. You know, it's kind of like, mm. we want to like fail quickly because you're going to learn from those, from those mistakes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kind of like with you that, you know, you, it, it was kind of out of your hands, but you yeah. know, I kind of, you had to deal with that. Yeah. And so, you know, you reached out to someone that, you know, you were acquainted with. And then it just, it it and I'd even come and at this him. this is before the gym, right? Before uh, it even opened. This, yeah, this is before the gym opened because I need that monetary value right. to be able to open the gym, mm -hmm. period. Or, or be able to get permits and build it out and right. stuff like that. Um, so he was just so nonchalant. He's like, yeah, I'll give it to you. That's but so, That's honestly like. It's crazy, right? Are, yeah, and, and, and that's kind of like what, what everyone talks about. Like, you never know who you're going to meet. And you never mm -hmm. know who, like, the, mm -hmm. when, you, when you say the right things, like, you never know, like, something could happen from that moment or like, you know, you're planting your seed essentially, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like what, what I'm taking from it too. Like, you know, cause when I talk to people and they're like, it kind of just happened. And, mm. and the person that was there, it was like, it just, you know, things happen for a reason. Yeah. Kind of thing, yeah. Right? And that's, and that's why like I have my faith and I have my, my understanding of like the world because it's just like, there's so many freak instances. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, if my ex didn't treat me the way that she treated me, I didn't go through that hard time that I went through with drugs and alcohol yeah. and I didn't, because I didn't really like working out. I didn't, I didn't like lifting. I liked working out, but I didn't like lifting. And so if she didn't do what she did, how she did it, I wouldn't have went through that binge. If I didn't go through that binge, I wouldn't have started working out. If I didn't start working out, I wouldn't have met Jonathan. Yeah. If I didn't meet Jonathan, I wouldn't have had my CrossFit gym. It's crazy. Like that whole journey that you just Series went through Series of is events, insane. right? It's insane. And it's like, and it's true. Like everyone talks about you have to go through the journey, you have mm. to experience it before you actually know how it feels and, and learn from it. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like what I want to, like, you know, not saying I want to fail, I want to, you know, I want to do all those things, like, you know, be at the lowest, which, you know, God forbid, I don't, you know, reach that low point and I learn from other people's mistakes, mm -hmm. you know, that's what I want to, that's like one of the mentality I go with whenever, whoever I am talking with when it comes to like situations like this, just learn from what they're, mm -hmm. from their mistakes mm -hmm. and try not, to try not to let that happen to myself, right? But it's, but the, the, the crazy thing, like I've, I've talked to a bunch of younger individuals as yourself, like about like this kind of growing is that you can't think of like, I don't want to fail. It's, or I'm not trying to fail. I'm not, whatever it is, is that you can't let those failures define who you are as a person. And you have to understand that you have to keep moving forward because I feel like with a generation coming up more so than anything else is that you always want the easy money or the easy experience. And when it gets hard, it's like, screw it and do something else. Right. If you're passionate about something and if you stay committed to it, you will be successful at it. Like I'm still like, I'm still not where I need to be, but I'm still growing. I'm still developing, but I'm better than where I was three years ago. You know, because when I got to the point where like Marston invested into me and I started building out my gym, um, it was about 2,200 square feet um, was, our, was our first location. So um, 2,200 square feet at opening day, had all these hopes and admiration, and, like optimism and all this stuff. Yeah. And I had like 20 members for the first like eight months, which is I didn't pay rent, you know. So it was like I was just able to cover rent by like my fourth month okay. the first three months I was like like pulling out on like my savings and like I was hemorrhaging money you know um, so it's one of the challenges you were facing after you opened up you know mm -hmm. making sure that you you, know, you get members in right? yeah and retaining them and getting, that's getting your business out there you know making yeah. sure that people know that you're, you, you exist essentially. yeah and 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 that's what's hard I feel like for a lot of young entrepreneurs is that 
it's it's harder than you think it's going to be. It's not going to be the whole I build it and they will come. That's why I thought. That's why I felt when I built that space. That's thought why I felt when I built this space. Is just a quick recap. Yeah. What year was this again? Were you? Um, this was 2015. This one, right? No, no, no. This, this we just moved here about six months ago. Okay. So this is this is our new location. Our original location um, is about a, a quarter the size of this. Okay. Wow. Um, this is nice and it's huge. In here. Yeah. It, it's it's, huge. it's 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 pretty big now. Um, but our, our first spot was only 2,500 square feet. Um, and I literally lost count of how many like sleepless nights I had with it because I was the only coach for the first year and a half. Wow, so you were the coach and running the business. I was, yeah, I was the head coach running every class. And um, so, and for us, we had a 5.30 a.m. class, so 5 a.m. We had an 8 a.m. We had a, um, a 5 p.m., 7 p.m., and an 8 p.m. class. We had five classes a day. And I taught all of them five days a week, um, including Saturday morning classes. Um, and so I was working r ridiculous hours because I'm waking up early, 4 a.m., and I'm going to sleep late, 10, 30, 11, every day for a year and a half. Um, I was sleeping on the floor of my gym for two years. So I slept on the gym floor for two years. I did freaking... Um, sink showers of like showering in the sink like I did I lived through every kind of hardship you can imagine and I know that if I didn't have the upbringing that like that my father and my mother like raised me like middle class um, lifestyle that like if you want something you gotta work for it and you're gonna go through struggles you're gonna suffer it's not gonna be easy you're, no one's gonna give you anything you, you, you gotta be committed to what you wanna do with your life and uh, I always just like stayed up most nights just thinking, I'm like, how am I going to make this work? I'm, but I'm committed. I can't let anybody down. I'm, I'm, and I'm in this, I'm in this, I'm in this. And um, after two years of living on a floor, like my back is like permanently messed up. Oh, I, I slept on everything you can think of from a, the floor to a air mattress that turned into an air taco because it would like deflate. It would deflate yeah. as I'm sleeping. So I like wake up like this. Oh, to a, uh, a kid's bed, I, like a little fold up temporary oh, kid's bed that was probably as wide as this. So if like I moved too much to the left, I'd fall off. I moved too much to the right, I'd fall off. And I slept on that for like eight months and then the bed broke and like, so I had to get an actual, I got like a futon, a little like futon looking thing. And then I hit it in, in, inconspicuously and then I would just like flatten it out. And then, but that was as hard as, nails anyway hard as a rock and then yes, um, honestly that you tell me that story is kind of like you know you hear those those stories from entrepreneurs like yeah i, I did this i i went sleepless nights and you and essentially you're that person yeah. you're that person that went through those hardships you know struggles like having to sleep on on the floors you know it's crazy like i can't i can't i can't imagine myself oh, doing that. and i'm just like you know i'm just thinking like put, i'm trying to put myself in your shoes i'm just like yeah wow, like, you know, you I can definitely see it in you, like, you know, that driven, that passion that you once, you know, when you, when, like you said, when you bite on it, you're on it. Yeah, you're exactly, go. exactly. And, and that's something that I think people have to understand when they're, if they want to pursue entrepreneurship mm -hmm. or, or anything like this, like, I haven't really gotten a paycheck in three years, you know, like, I, I live very, very minusculely. I, I, I cook all my own food. I don't go out that much. I don't spend money on alcohol. I don't, I don't do anything. And do you think that's a common thing, like gym owners, like having to deal with it? Well, well, I mean, I guess it depends to where you come it, from, right? It but depends where you're, it, it, it depends on your social status, right? In life. Um, I didn't have help in regards of like, like my family helped me and they supported me, but they couldn't give me like a free apartment. Right, right. They couldn't. They were like, there like emotionally. They, they're they emotionally and supportive, but like once the gym was open, there's like, this is on you, man. Yeah. Like you wanted this, you have to be committed and, and it'll work out and God willing and and just just keep at it. Like and don't give up. how old were you when you opened up your first gym again? Um, I was 20, I was 26 going 27. 26, 27. 26, okay. 27. And when you first saw your parents, like, you know, hey, like I'm going to be opening up a gym. What do you think about that? So my dad was very gun ho He was just like, all right, yeah, cool, fuck it, yeah. Go ahead, good luck. And um, kind of like my dad. Yeah, go do it. <laughs> yeah, go do it. Um, and, and, and my mom was a little bit more pessimistic, meaning like, listen, like, 
because I've been teaching martial arts for 15 years, so it she, she knows how much we struggled with just that. But my my dad always had a, like a good job too on top of the martial arts school. She's like, if you're just doing just this, you know, like where are you gonna get money from? I'm just mm-hmm. like. Well, if I'm good and like, and hopefully within three to five years, I'll be in a position where I can like make this and generating money, right? And she's just like, are you willing to go through that Mm -hmm. to get to that point? And I was just like, listen, it's either doing this or I'm like going to do a desk job and I'll quit every other freaking month because I'm not the type to sit behind a desk. Like that's, that's not who I am. Um, So she was like, all right. Yeah. Good luck. And, so and now you have this amazing, big, beautiful gym. Thank you. And, thank um, you. you. You know, you're here now and you uh, you got a good community. Yeah. You know, I did I did my research and I saw online that you guys are one of, number one in Hunterdon County. Yep. Yep. Which is 2018. Honestly, like, yeah. And now it makes me want to come in and try it out. Yeah. More than community. welcome to, man. More than welcome to. <laughs> so now that we're on, talking about your gym, like you tell us a little bit more of like how it differentiates itself from its competitors around here. You know, it, there is that, you know, that. You did win that trophy, you know? Yeah, 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 but, you yeah. Know, maybe tell, tell the audience that, you know, doesn't know your career. Yeah, is. so, so in, in what gives CrossFit a bad rep more than anything else is that there is more bad gyms than good gyms. Like, that's what I've experienced from opening my gym as well as my athletes visiting other gyms when they're on vacations and stuff. Okay. Um, I'm not dissing CrossFit as an entity. I'm, I'm dissing the people's commitment into... Um, developing themselves, like the coaches developing themselves, right. their their staff. So, like for so, instance, so it all starts with the with the owner, right? With the with the owners, coach. yes. Okay. Yeah. And everything just trickles down. After it's, that it trickles and, down okay. because it just it feels like people don't give a shit, right? You know, in, in regards to their business. So with us, you can we, we've been here for like six months. It doesn't smell like a gym, right? There's no lingering stank, right? If you look, look at my floors, there's no sweat stains on my floors. Um, I dust every piece of equipment every week. The floors get cleaned seven times a day. Seven times a day, wow. A day. So we are, and if you look at like my Google reviews, Facebook reviews, the one thing we always get complimented on is number one, our coaching, because we're attentive, right? What that means is whether there's a class of five people, or 20 people that we train our coaches to be hands-on and detailed and working with their athletes. So let's say you're doing a advanced barbell movement and you know what, you're about a month and a half in and the coach is correcting your form and he's seeing your form keeps breaking because the weight's a little too heavy for you. Our coach will either break down your barbell to a lighter weight to make sure the, um, your execution of the technique matches your ability and the weight variance um, or just, we'll, we'll just modify the movement because we want you to be able to come in tomorrow. Right. I don't want you to get hurt in a class because we pushed you too hard past your ability and you can't maintain that, right? You're an individual to me, you know? There's no, there's no general fitness that I'm trying to make you f- like hit. It's what is your why? My why is like, why do I train? Mm-hmm. Well. I train because I, I enjoy martial arts. So I want to be a better martial artist. I want to be, uh, I like hiking. I like snowboarding. I like uh, like being out and being active. Being active yeah. I like being active. So that's what I like to do. So my training in CrossFit reflects what I love doing, like outside of CrossFit, right? right? If you come, if you're a dad, right? You're 42 years old. You got a bad back. And you're just like, listen, Brian, I don't care about lifting heavy. I don't care about that. I just want my back to feel better. I want to be able to keep up with my kids. That is your why. I'm going to facilitate that why. And most gyms do not do that. Whether it's CrossFit or like a a strength conditioning gym, their why there is what they expect you to be. Like we're a heavy lifting gym, you're going to lift heavy. Mm -hmm. Or we're a competitive gym, you're going to compete hard. It's like, well, what if I don't want to compete? I don't give a shit. Like you're gonna meet our standard. Like that's not like I'm an adult. I'm sorry. Like you're not gonna tell me what like what I need to do. Right. You know. And I realize that a lot of most CrossFit gyms are like that. They're just like, okay, we're a competitive gym. Oh, we're a gymnastics gym. Oh, we're this. We're that. We're this. Listen, that's not CrossFit. You know, CrossFit is about helping individuals live a healthier and more fulfilled life. Mm-hmm. Only point zero 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 one percent of us will be a 
CrossFit Games athlete, a professional right. athlete. And is it only the professional athlete um, community, like a very small percentage? Oh, oh you know, it's... And, and like, if I were to put everything together... It's like, that's no, it's literally 99.999% of CrossFitters don't compete. Okay. So why the hell is every CrossFit gym trying to be a games level gym? It. And okay. it's, it's turning away the community of people that can really benefit and grow with CrossFit methodology because they think that they can't do it. Whereas for us, like I have people with one leg, I have people with... Every, any, any sort of like mental issue you can think of, ADHD, um, um, uh, slight Asperger's, like we have everybody in our gym, people who are extremely overweight, people who are underweight, people who have never worked out in 50 years are in my gym. I have, a, uh, I have an athlete that's 75 years old, three-time cancer survivor, and like lived like through like two or three wars, like because he was in the Marines. Wow. And like, this is he's been with us for about eight months and he's he's got he's gotten the best test results from his doctor that he's ever had in like 20 years wow, that must be so fulfilling and 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 that's what separates our gym from everybody else if there's no asdc standard there's a johnny standard there's a Susie standard there's a stacy standard that's what we try and do it's that, all about them Right. It's about yeah, them because yeah. you're an individual. You have individualistic needs. My goal as a coach and my staff of coaches is there to develop you to make sure you're reaching your personal goals, not my goals. So if, that's irrelevant. Right. Okay. So you're the, clearly we see, you know, the, the, the passion here and the community driven mm -hmm. and like, you know, how important it is for you to, you know, to, to cater it towards an individual, right? Mm -hmm. So someone that is, you know, let's say, let's say a gym owner, a CrossFit owner is watching this podcast, right? Okay. If you had to give him advice, kind of like to, to, to switch that mentality of having like a, a gym that's more competing, you know, and catering it towards more of an individual, how would you do that? You know, how would you tell him? Like, is it through your, like through them as a gym owner or? So like the, it's, the it's, it's all about the meth, the, the message, right? So there's nothing wrong with competition. Like we, we still have a competitive gym. Like that's not, so I don't want, I don't want you to think that like, we're, like we don't, like we're not competitive or whatever it is. Like we're still a competitive okay. gym, but who you should be competitive with more than anything else is yourself, mm. right? So when I'm doing a wad, yes, I'm, if, if I'm working next to Harry and we're, and we're going push up for push up, he's driving me to be a better person because I'm trying to keep up with him. So there's a competitive nature with that, but at the end of the workout, if, if Harry beats me, like I'm not gonna be mad about it. Right. I'm gonna be happy that I was able to work out next to someone that pushed me to push myself to get through that workout. And, and, and that's what people have to really um, shoot for to really try and develop that kind of culture because people like most of my athletes wouldn't be doing the things that they're doing unless they were doing it here you know or within like within a CrossFit mindset you know because it's it's just it puts you in, a, in an uncomfortable situation to when like if I was by myself and I was doing a hundred push-ups I might give up after 30 and be like you know what nobody's here to judge yeah, me on it like right. I'm done like whatever but now that I got Sally next to me and she's going faster than me I'm like how is this yeah. girl going so much quicker than I am I have to try and keep up with it <laughs> I felt like you that know? too I won one wide I was like man she's killing it she's yeah. she's killing with I don't know what it, what's called you do a bunch of like 100 jump ropes and then 100 sit-ups and then you go down you go down to um, like 100 and 80 then 60 oh yeah yeah it's, it's it's like like you're you're chipping down yeah you're chipping chipper. down i think it, has a, is it doesn't have a name or something yeah yeah the, the, uh, those are usually chipper work chipper, well, chipper workouts because you're, you're chipping away yeah. at it yeah yeah so i was like man she's and i love jump roping and she was killing it. and i was like no nah, i gotta catch up so i yeah, started yeah, you know yeah. in my head just competing with myself but like you know just trying to you know trying to beat her yeah yeah, yeah. Was, and and that's and that's what's really about so if like if, if a gym is trying to be trying to reach this the CrossFit elite standpoint, like like I have like probably sub regional levels is like like amateur like mm -hmm. athletes that work out here, but that shouldn't be your purpose, right? So with CrossFit method, it's I program for the best athlete in my gym, but you have to be able to scale for everybody else, mm -hmm. right? But what a That's lot of gyms scaling. The scaling is important, but a lot of gyms like they program for their best athlete, but then they try to force everyone to match what that top athlete's doing. But how doing. do you do that? Like, okay, so like, how would you mm. like, you know, how did you do that? 
how did you how were you able to build this program that's scalable for anyone where well, you know people are having troubles doing that for their own gym so crossfit itself is very it's it's scalable so it's if you do the method right what separates me from you you from rich froning or a matt fraser is not the workout but it's, it's the scalability of the workout so i'll have someone with one leg do a workout with back squats in it, but I'm modifying it so they're getting what they need within that stimulus to benefit themselves. So that's what's important, is not getting the mindset of like, oh, this athlete can't do this movement, then they should be doing this workout. It's like, no, they, are, they can't do that movement, but it's finding out a way to work with them so that they're working within their ability or their limitation to challenge themselves. So if we're doing a squat and he has one leg, and he can't do a, a full squat. Do you know what he can do? For instance, be up on the box, he sits down, comes right back up. That's a squat, right? right. So granted he's, he's sitting down, but it's still challenging him within his limitation, right? He, he, he can't balance just yet, right? So being able to work with him like that and realize like, hey, I'm not defined by my limitation, right. by my one leg, I'm not defined by that. You know, I'm only defined by my willingness to want to change and better myself. You know, and that's what CrossFit affiliate owners have to realize. They have to understand that people can't, anyone can benefit from CrossFit. I've had, like I said, underweight people, over, like overweight people, people with missing appendages, different kind of health issues, cancer, all these uh, fused spines, all these crazy diagnoses, illnesses, whatever it is. But there's always a way to incorporate them into the CrossFit community as well as a workout. But it's about your willingness as a coach mm -hmm. to think outside the box, to give them what they need to be successful. So you gotta be, you gotta, you gotta be more interested than interested in them. You, you gotta be more interested in, interested in them. So you gotta and, like really like just try to figure out like how am I gonna help this person? Right? Yes. It's kind of like that mentality. Yes. Like it's how am I gonna figure out? You know, they have a, they can't do a certain movement. Now I gotta figure out how to do it. Yes. Right. As a coach, I kind of like it's about up. It falls upon yourself, right? Yeah. To figure that out. Yeah. One hundred percent. And that's why for us, like if someone gets their L one, so to be a CrossFit trainer, you need to get your L one, which is your CrossFit level one trainer certification. So you have to get that. But just because you have that doesn't mean you're a freaking good coach. Right. You know, so for us, when someone gets a CFL one, they come into the gym, it's a four month vetting process. They take, spend two months shadowing us, right? To when we mentor them in a class at least two times a week. So they come in twice a week, they have to watch us coach. And then as we're coaching, we explain why we're doing stuff to them. This reason why this person is modifying this is this, this reason why this person is getting scaled down to this and they're understanding how to think outside that box Right, then they spend two months of me shadowing them oh, so Right, they turn it on them now. so turn on them. So now as we're going through the work I'm like that was great, but they could have done this instead. That was awesome But you know think about doing this instead. So after four months, right? They're not a proficient coach most CrossFit gyms like oh you have your L1. All right, cool. Good luck and they just let them run classes. Like, no, like, I don't care if you come from another gym, you're still going through four months because you probably don't coach the way that I want you to coach. So we have a very, very, very high standard for coaching yes, staff and, here. And, that, and I can see now why, you know, you guys are, you know, number one in Huntington County. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I take, we take great, great, great pride in, in not only the programming, but our staff. Um, all, most of our staff has continued education in CrossFit. Okay. So what, what that means, we have multiple certifications. So I'm, I'm a CFL2, so I'm a level two CrossFit trainer. I'm going for my next, so there's four levels, four tiers of CrossFit trainers. There is CFL1, which is like, a, like pretty much everyone has that. CFL2, which is like you're proficient in programming and like group management. CFL3 is pretty much you're, like you're at the capacity and knowledge to really facilitate regional and game level athlete. L4 is like, like you're just like, it's pretty much getting your PhD in right. CrossFit, okay. um, essentially. Um, um, so pretty much, like the, this is a good analogy. Your bachelor's is CF, no, your high school diploma is CFL1. Okay, your bachelor's is L2. Your master's is your L3. And pretty much your PhD is being an L4 uh, w within the CrossFit method. And least. you don't require that though, right? Like continuous education? Oh, no, they, they have to. Oh, they have they to? They have okay. to. Okay. Because if, if, because that's what makes my coaches good and our, like, 
my staff good is that they're not satisfied with just being an okay coach. You know, they're always pushing themselves to try and develop themselves more. Um, understand their knowledge more, whether it's nutrition, like they have to either pursue more CrossFit certifications or like nutrition or something within the fitness to not only grow themselves as a coach, but to be able to grow our community as a self. Cause like I can't do everything myself. Right. right. So being able to have coaches that care and are as passionate as I'm about developing our athletes is very, very crucial. So when you hire, you definitely got to look at you. Those are the kind of the chase you look for driven, Passion, driven, passionate, and caring. Caring, caring, because I've I've had one individual work for me in the past. I had to let him go because he was monotone. He wouldn't correct people. He thought he was better than than the athletes because he was better at CrossFit than they were. Um, like if they would ask him questions when he was working out during his free time, he would brush them off. I'm like, no, that's you, you a representation of a gym of my gym. You have to. The athletes come first. Like if you're working out and they ask you a question, you answer that question. And he wouldn't meet eye to eye, so I had to let him go because he wasn't representing what I want my gym to be like. And that's, and that's important, right? That's important as a it's gym very, owner very, to very make important. sure that the people that are working for you are the people that, you know, that are living up to the standards that you want it to be. 100%. The, the way you want it to be. And, and so how hard is it for you to like say, like if, you know, have, I'm, I'm sure you've probably dealt with other situations also, like you know, mm. having to maybe fire someone or tell someone no. Like how, like how do you deal with that? How do you it, go about that? It's so the hardest thing for me is that I tend to give chances too much, right? Mm. So I, I want to see the best in everybody, and I want to see that that like I care. So what's hard is that I have to come at them like, okay, listen, like I've had X complaints about you. You know, I'm seeing, I'm seeing you in classes. Like there's no energy there. It's people, your class sizes are getting small because people are avoiding your classes. You know what? Let's try and do this. Let's try and do that. I give them a second chance, right? Let's see if they can rise to the occasion because sometimes they do, but most of the times they don't, right? So it's like, um, that that battered half housewife syndrome is that the the abusive spouse male or female will change when they feel like they're going to lose the person that they're with don't worry babe i'm going to do this i'll do that i'll do this i'll do that and then they change for a month two months maybe even six months right and then once you realize you're back in love with them they go right back to how they were you know and that's what i'm realizing more with like employees and that's why i have to be steadfast with how i what my expectations are for my coaches and for my staff and also with myself right. is that you have to be selfless if you want to be a coach because you really have to understand like you're here to guide people to better people in their lives if you're not passionate about wanting to do that then there's no reason why you should be a coach so it all falls down to passion right 100 100 percent and selfless but what if someone wants to be that right what if someone wants to care so much and like you know be empathetic and you know but they have so much heart, they, they can't do that, you know, but they know that they, that's what they want. Like how, like, you know, as, a, as, a, as an owner and as a mm, coach, like, mm. you know, someone came up to you and you just kind of see that, like how would you push them? Or how, so would you so them? are you you're saying pretty much in, in regards of like someone that wants to be like uh, in fitness or coaching and they just don't have the personality to do it? Yeah. So the, anything is coachable or fixable. It's about understanding and coming to terms with the ego to say that, hey, you know, I'm not very personable. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of a dick sometimes, it, okay. and accepting that that's what you do, yeah. and now growing from it. So being self-aware. Being self-aware, exactly. Because the worst thing that we can do as humans or as individuals is not take criticism. I'm not perfect. Like I, some days I'll come here with the mood because I either didn't sleep well or X, Y, and Z. Business is very stressful, yeah. you know. Um, and then I don't even think that I'm like being snappy or snarky or whatever it is. But then if someone's just like, dude, you're kind of being a dick today. I'm like, oh, you like, you know, like I am like, I'm very, very open to criticism. Okay. But what's wrong with a lot of the generation coming up, right? 18, 35, 18 to 40, whatever it is, right? Is that they want the world to bow down to their whims. If you don't accept them for who they are, then you're what's wrong. That's not how business works because as adults, we are always growing. We're always developing. Like what I think now is different than what I thought when I was 23. You know, how I am now is different than how I was when I was 25, you know, and we're constantly growing and developing. But what makes you a, a more successful business owner, entrepreneur, as well as just an overall person is your ability to see your shortcomings 
and not say like, I have to change myself for this person. It's like, no, I have to better myself to really grow and contribute to society the way that I want to, you know? And that's what's hard for a lot of um, people that want to get into fitness is that they won't take accountability for their shortcomings and be like, okay, well, if this person left, you know, them, th they're the problems. Like, no, but what'd you do to facilitate them leaving? You know, like I've said things in my gym that people didn't like and have left for. And then I reflect back. I'm like, I didn't, I don't think I said anything wrong. I literally don't think I did anything wrong. But I have to put myself in their position. You know what? How are they feeling that, that day? Was there a spouse dispute? Was there, their kids were upset? Was, it's like, you know what? It was, it could have been X, Y, or Z. And, but not letting them define who I am, but also learning from that situation of losing that client or that, that member. You gotta be like empathetic, essentially. Empa a hundred, hundred ten percent. Being empathetic to, to not only yourself, but to your athletes and the world around you, you know? So it's, it's understanding that you don't want to isolate anybody, but you also don't want to limit your ability to resonate with any walk of life, whether it's a millionaire, whether it's someone on welfare, whether it's someone that is a different ethnicity or whatever it is, you know, everyone, we're all people, mm -hmm. you know? We're not defined by our social status, by our color of our skin, by any of that. We're defined by how we treat the people around us. And that's what's more important for a coach than anything else is that I've met a lot of good coaches, but I've met a lot of bad coaches. That they're in it, because they have authority. Got it. You know, I tell you to do a burpee, you do that burpee. And, they, and they're in it for that high of being the able authority, to, like, authority you know, like aspect, control things, and control things. But it's like, I tell you to do a burpee because I want you to get better, right. not, not because I'm- It's about intent. It's, it's about right? intent, intent, exactly. Yeah. Like when you were telling the ego, I was like, this is crazy, like we're talking about this. I yeah. was listening to this Dude, that's, that's such an important thing. And that's why like, I'm happy that like people always like bust my balls, like why do you go for philosophy and this and that? I'm like, my whole major was understanding religion, was understanding ethics, morality, understanding being empathetic. Like, it's not what my perception of reality is. It's, there's two, two, three sides of every story. Your reality, my reality, and what actually happened, right? Mm -hmm. So understanding that and being able to, if someone comes at you hot-headed, right? Like, as a gym owner, as a coach, right? If, if a member comes at me aggressive, I cannot be like, screw me, screw you, and yeah. yell at them right back. It's like, no, stop, pause. What made them act out that way? What's really going on to facilitate that? Did you say something? Did something happen at home? And put, be empathetic enough to understand and not let your ego be like, well, I'm a proud business owner. I will not tolerate this in my facility and this, 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 and snapping at them. I, I've, had, I've had people yell at me for generally no reason. I'm like, I don't understand why she's yelling at me. Like, I'm generally completely completely lost on why that happened. But when, when she's yelling, I'm like, like, I'm sorry you feel that way. Like this is, rah, 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 rah. listen, like that's like, uh, again, like we can, we can go outside, we can talk about this more. Like I didn't, I never snapped back at her. I never yelled, right? I just took it as whatever she's going through in life and she's just taking it out on me. And that's hard for a lot of people yeah. to do that. You know, so to be able to not bark back, mm -hmm. right? So, it's and, like, a, like you kind of want to defend yourself. Yeah. Right? Oh yeah. Like like if it if it's like if I'm if I'm out on the street and someone's trying to get aggressive with me, I'm gonna I'm gonna like create some space, have my martial arts mentality kick in and be like observe, but I'm talking down the situation. Mm, I'm not trying to escalate okay. the situation, right? Okay. So, but that's how I approach this. But I also approach because there's people like I have people who are Hindu, Catholic, Buddhist, people who are atheists, like of like different mm -hmm. Baptists, whatever. I have so many faiths in here, but yeah. I don't judge them on religious or political affiliation, whether they're Republican or Democrat or neutral or anarchist, whatever the heck's wrong with them or whatever they want to pursue. That's fine. But again, it comes back to, you can believe what you want to believe, but you cannot judge me for how I view the world. I might view it as A, B, and C, and your X, Y, and Z, but that's fine. It's about understanding my point of view and your point of view, and coming to common ground that you're a person, I'm a person, I can think the way I think, you can think the way that you, that you think, they define, those are defining characteristics as a person. So I have a question about yeah. that. Um, there's and, and like, I'm sure I'm not the only one, and I'm sure there's a lot of people too, but like, 
when you have a certain point of view, right? And your friend has a different point of view, mm-hmm. right? But you're so close to that friend. Mm-hmm. How do you, or like, how would you go about, like, handling that situation? Like, taking a step back um, and, and, and really try to, like, not get offended to whatever it is that they're saying or how they approach life. Like, so this is, so uh, another backstory to me really quick. I had no friends until I was, like, in the seventh grade. I had a really, I probably stuttered probably a couple times in this little podcast, but I had a really bad stutter and a really bad lisp. So everybody made fun of me. I had no friends. I sat by myself at lunch, you know, like no one talked to me. If they talked to me, like, uh, 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 hey, man, like they'll just make fun of me. Like if I would do a presentation in front of class, like kids would like, like mock me, like wow. talk crap about me. Like I was bullied before bullying was cool. Like, like that's what I was, I was that kid until I was in seventh grade. And I had a really low self-worth um, because of that, but it also taught me a very, very, very crucial fact of say whatever you want to me, it's just words. Mm, okay, I see. You know? You're not and, affecting me. Uh, it's not affecting me. Not you, affecting. you can say whatever. Do you remember when you were a kid and someone said, your mom is so fat, this, this, yeah. this, and you're like, the end of the world just happened, right? And like, but I was literally ridiculed like every day. How'd you develop that? Like, how'd you develop like that? Like, whatever you say doesn't affect me, you know? It's, like, it's, it's the mentality of how I was brought up. Because my, my dad was raised in Newark, New Jersey. Which, yeah. If you know anything about Newark, yeah. it's a very rough, rough, rough area. Um, he was, because I'm, I'm actually, I'm, I'm a mix, so I'm Cuban and I'm German oh, really? predominantly. Yeah. Right, right. I, I, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Um, yeah, my, my mom was born and raised in Havana, um, Cuba, and then she came over here when she was like 14, 15. Um, and uh, so she was made fun of her whole like, life in America because she was foreign, mm-hmm. right? And calling her spick and X, Y, and Z and whatever have you. And my dad was one of about five white males in his high school so he got beat up predominantly because of race you know and that was in the 70s like the 60s and 70s and then my mom same thing she just got ridiculed because she couldn't speak english you know she had to go to esl classes and watch a lot of like instructional videos on how to speak and so they were raised being ridiculed threatened like my dad was being assaulted they were constantly fighting back and so when i was going through that in my own way, like I, I, I probably got into a handful of fights in, in school, but it was more so just like the, the verbiage and my dad had just constantly drilled in. He's just like, their words do not define you. The whole sticks and stones may break your bones, but mm-hmm. words may never hurt you. People don't teach that anymore. They were just like, words will hurt you and so will the sticks. It's like, no, you can say whatever you want to me, but if I understand my self-worth. Yeah, that's, that's the part where it, I think that's a gap between yes. the, because honestly, like I am that kind of person. Like you can say something to me, I'll get so mad, but I won't do anything about it, right? Yeah. I won't do anything because like I don't want to make a mistake. And that's yeah. what my dad says, like always, like if someone comes up to you, like you know, and they're trying to start a fight, like yeah, if they hit you, like okay, it makes sense to you defend know, fight defend back. yourself, yeah. yeah. But if like they're just talking and talking, just stay away from it. Don't get involved in it because you never know. They can they can break something. You can die. They can, you God forbid you can do something to them, yeah. and then they go into like you know it, it just get crazier. And so, yeah, I, I had those moments where like you know people come up to me and like try to start shit, and I'm just like, it's, no, I can't. I don't want to. I, I shouldn't. Pointless. But it's just like it's just like, but I'm gonna. And I and I and I do sometimes. Like I go back to them. I get in their face. I'm like, so what's up? Like you know, are we gonna are we gonna go or not? Yeah. And it's like it's like, but that's not how the way it's supposed to be. Well, that's not how I want it to be, right? Yeah. I, I kind of want to control that, and I don't want to be seen as that. Because like, mm-hmm. if you're in a new crowd and people see that, they're gonna see you as that, like this type yeah. of person who reacts like that. And that's not like who I am in general, like yeah. you know. So I don't want to have that impression. So, so and like, so and it, it, it's a hard thing because I don't really classify myself as Republican or Democrat or whatever have you. So definitely think, especially with the, the prior election, there's like. You either left mm-hmm. or right, oh, yeah. and it's just Black like it, it's it's so aggressive yeah. on, on both frontiers, and people are afraid to have open dialogue with one another, and I think the, the what people have to understand is like your your question like how do I approach someone that voted for Trump and I think Trump's an idiot or a, a cheeto or whatever like people say about him, you know, and like you wanted Hillary because of women's right or whatever it is, okay. 
it's to have an open conversation with that person to be like, listen, bro, like I loved your death, Johnny. You know, let's let's sit and talk about it. Like like have a intellectual debate mm-hmm. without getting aggressive. Because like I I like playing devil's advocate. Like when Trump does something good, I'll say good Trump. If he does something stupid, I'll call him an idiot. You know, just like with any politician. Right. You know, and, and people are so wrapped in with his personal life, not what he's actually accomplishing. So, like, in regards to, like, the government and stuff right, like right, that. Right. You know, so I, I try to look more so towards that. But then people will say, oh, well, you have to think about his personality, how he does yeah. this and how he does that, because that, he has to act like a president and this and this. I was just like, listen, like, it's how is the country, the, the country hasn't burned up yet, right? It hasn't blown up. Mm-hmm. Right, he he calmed issues with North Korea. He, he's 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 done good, but he's also done dumb stuff, right. you know. And it's understanding that, like, I will give you the satisfaction of say he's an idiot, but also you have to acknowledge that he has done some good. Yeah, you know, it's seeing both Honestly, sides yeah. of the page, right, without letting your own uh, pure opinion about it, your own biased opinion, dictate how I feel about you right. as a person because just because you like Trump right and I don't like Trump doesn't mean you're a bad person right okay it just means he lines up with maybe um, a personal policy or whatever it is right, right. He I, lines- sure babe let, let's go see I'll compromise what's wrong with people nowadays is that you're so obsessed with what you want you will never compromise. It's like, all right, fuck it. Like, you go see what you want to see. I'll see what I want to see. I'll, I'll, I'll see you tonight. And then they'll just, like, you'll do your own things. Like, no. Life is a give and take, right? If I love what I do as a job, right, I'm going to make sure I'm putting in extra work. If I'm doing the bare minimum, you're never going to be successful, right? If this is the bare minimum, I'm up there. I'm doing double, triple what's expected of me in a relationship, right? It's the give and the take, right? I love you, I care about you. I'm not saying you, Johnny, but like as an example, right? I love you and I care about you. Why am I not gonna do some self-sacrifice? You know what, I can go see this uh, next week with Steve, Mm -hmm. or I can, you know what, we can see it, your movie this week, because it just came out, let's wait a couple weeks anyway, because it should be so packed, you know? But people are so obsessed with like what I want, what I need, without what's better for the group, like me in like a relationship or me in the business, what's better as a collective, right? And, and that's what I really think as, as Americans, we really have to get back to it is what's, what's going to benefit us as a whole um, and not what's not gonna divide us because that's what's going on right now. I, I don't know how we got on po- like politics, but I feel like that's what's going on with the country now is that we are getting divided more than unified. Yeah. And what's wrong with that is that that's going to lead to social distress, um, distress, and it's going to lead to more riots and more this and more that. If someone wants to be gay, let them be gay. How does me loving another man affect you? Who, who cares? Who cares? Love is love, right? But at the same exact time, if somebody... Um, if somebody doesn't share that view, like, you know what, like, I support that you're gay, like, you can do your own, your own thing, but, like, I'm, like, I'm, I'm not like that, like, I don't like that. Mm-hmm. They're entitled to feel that way. They're entitled to, to respect what you want, but also understand that that's a sin if they're religious or whatever it is. But them saying it's a sin is like, you're a heathen, you're going to hell. It's just like, dude, like, I, I, just I, just, I, I wouldn't do that. Like, they, there's, there's ways of going about yeah. doing it, to accepting it and then not persecuting somebody for a, a religious belief, whether they're Muslim or Catholic or Christian or whatever, Hindi, whatever it is. You know, you, you, you have no right to judge their life choices. Cause it doesn't impact you. Who cares if someone smokes weed down, yeah. like, down the road from you? Who cares if the person's having a cigarette? Yeah, I, I, I smoked for 15 years and every time I walk by someone having a cigarette, I'm like, that's freaking disgusting, but I'm not going to like scream in their face. I see it, I see it like on like Facebook sometimes or people like grabbing cigarettes in people's mouth like, you're killing yourself. Who the hell are you to tell a grown ass adult what they can and can't do? You know, and, and that's why I think we need to get back to is, is really understanding, like even from a business mindset, personal aspect, a relationship mindset, is that we are all people. Mm-hmm. We all 
breathe the same air, bleed the same blood, right? And we have to be supportive of each other's individuality, but at the same exact time have our own personalities because I think a lot more people nowadays are, um, are social constructing themselves to be like everybody else because that's because what of they because of social media, social media yeah. it's taking away the individualism of of life you know it, life is about being johnny being brian being whoever you are that's so true like when i was listening to that podcast he, was, he, he mentioned the same exact thing that social media is kind of like this we're actors essentially we're being mm. we're acting out on instagram on facebook we want to be we want to portray ourselves as this kind of person and mm-hmm. we lose ourselves in that yeah. sense right yeah and and what, what, what do you what do you think about social media? You know, I, I want to know your thoughts about that and like so for you know, me from a business perspective and from a, a personal, society. You okay, know. so from from a business perspective, if you're on social media, you have to be social media inclined. Like right. that's, I am 30 years old, but I am the less least amount of tech savvy person you can think of. Like, but, you understand the power but I, I understand the power of it. Yeah. You know, one bad review can impact your business, mm. right? So that's why everything you do, you have to do it with the conscious of being criticized by a world judge, like a world class judge, mm. or um, like if someone owns a restaurant and they're like a foodie, like you treat every client like they can write a review and just impact your business. Treat everyone like they are your best client. Because what happens too is that certain gyms, for instance, because we're, we're, we're across a gym, and they, when people come in, they cater and really bow down and help out the D1 athletes, the D2 athletes, the, the men and women that are coming from bodybuilding backgrounds. They will bow down and like, oh, they give them all this attention. But then the mom that wants to lose a little weight that's like kind of unsure and unsure about herself. They're just like, oh, hey, cool. Welcome to class, jump in. And they don't even give a shit about them. They're the one that needs the most amount of support. Right. You know, I treat every single person in my gym like they are a D1 athlete gonna go compete in the NFL or NHL or whatever it is because Everyone needs that attention. Everyone needs that love. Everyone needs that respect for them to be successful, especially within fitness. You know, so even if your why isn't competing competitively, I'm still going to treat you and give you everything you need to fulfill that why. You know, I'm not going to be like, oh, okay, well, there you go. This is a workout. Good luck. If you can't do it, tough shit. You know, that's that's not what it's about, and that's where a lot of entrepreneurs. Um, get lost in whether it's a fitness or a restaurant or something of that nature is that they just get complacent and no. then they don't take the, the customer into account they don't and they, honestly the customer now has the ultimate power like you said if they leave a bad review that can ruin your business right a hundred a hundred and ten percent because of social media they, they you have they have the ability now to express you know they their thoughts mm-hmm. in, a, in a broader sense oh and in, in, in a global market and, it's, yeah, a, it's exactly. a global market now exactly. right so, so like how would you so how do you handle that like or I, I wouldn't say handle that but like what would I mean honestly like you're, you're just from what I see and mm. the vibes that I get from you and the things that you're telling me like you know I can tell you're very conscious about what you do you know here and online too yeah oh yeah 100 percent. Right? everything like for me as a business owner I even though I'm I am neutral I I very neutral like I don't have I don't talk about my religion, my religious faith online. I don't talk about political opinions online. I don't do any of that. Because what's wrong with a lot of young adults and adult adults, right, 35, 40 years old, is that you are a keyboard warrior. And if you're upset, Trump says X, Y, and Z. You get on Facebook, you're like, pop, 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 and you just ridicule and rip them apart. More than three quarters or half of your friends, not three quarters, probably half of your friends are Trump supporters. You're not, you're not as isolated as those people. You just lost the respect of those people. Mm-hmm. Whether you want the respect or not, right? If you are trying to start a successful business, everything you should post be amb- uh, amb- ambiguous. Like there should be nothing against a certain topic, nothing for a certain topic. 
is being supportive of your message. My message is I want to help people. I really want to help people grow and develop within a cross methodology and a mindset to, to help them be better and feel good about themselves. Right. Like that's my message. Everything I post on Facebook, on my personal Facebook, on my personal Instagram reflects what my business is trying to represent. I don't have two faces. It's Brian here, Brian off, but I'm very conscientious of personal life Brian affecting professional Brian. Right, so all my actions dictate how I'm going to not only treat people. Because keep in mind, if I'm at, let's say, Miss uh, uh, Shoprite, right, and I have an ASTC CrossFit shirt on, right, I go in there and the cashier brings something wrong. I flip out, I'm like, I want to talk to your manager. And the manager comes down, like, you're an idiot, and this, this, this. I'm wearing my my logo right. on me. And now that money even, that's Brian, um, I don't do that, but let's use that as an example, right? That's personal life, Brian. But I'm wearing my business. I'm the face of my gym, right? So now that person's upset. They, they can just destroy me online and affect my business just because they messed up at their job, but I overreacted. Dude, if someone messes up my food at like a Panera or something like that, I'm like, dude, don't even worry about it, man. No worries. Yeah. Like, I'm so nonchalant, I'm just nonchalant right. about it. You do not let outside forces dictate your, uh, your emotional reaction. And, that, and that's just like, because I'm a philosophy guy, so I was really big into stoicism. And that's really the biggest thing I got from my college career is stop letting actions of others, right? Whether it's uh, a friend, like you get a flat tire and you call like your best friend. And he's like, nah, dude, I'm tired. Hangs up the phone on you. Just like Wyman gets upset about that. Like, yeah, he he did you dirty, but there's no reason to let his negligence as a as a friend, okay, really tarnish like your mood and be like, okay, all right, that that that's fine, bro. Thanks, man. I appreciate it anyway. And just figure it out yourself, man. Like, and, and that's the thing is that people always want to point the blame to everybody else, but it's like if someone doesn't want to do something, they're not going to do it, you know. Um, I really don't let those individual moments um, affect your personality and your reaction to stuff. I kind of want to know more about like your opinion on the fitness industry. Okay. Um, maybe specifically CrossFit and like you know wh- wh- where do you think it's headed in five years? Where do you see it? Maybe even more ten years. Um, so um, speaking of CrossFit specifically, is it's at because when when I joined up there was like ten thousand affiliates in the world. It's about like 18,000 now. And people are getting into the business for the wrong reason. People see it as a get rich quick scheme and they're not getting into it because they want to help people. Like I can think of three gyms in this area that just got in it for the money. They don't program, they don't have community events, they don't really do much of anything aside from this is your workout, this is what we're doing, let's go guys. And they don't represent CrossFit. You know, but they have a CrossFit name. And that's, and that's where the issue is. So I think there's gonna come to a point in the next five years that CrossFit HQ is really, gonna, really going to put more expectations on us. Because as affiliates, we're not, CrossFit isn't a franchise. So we pay the right to use the CrossFit name as an affiliation, but CrossFit HQ does not dictate what I do. I think in the next about five years, CrossFit HQ is gonna get a little bit more hands-on to make sure the affiliates are representing the brand better. Kind of like an audit. Yeah, kind of like an audit because that's something that is um, going to not only help out the community, um, but really allow um, allow a certain standard of competency right. to be within the CrossFit gyms. Because like I, like I said before, there's more bad gyms than good gyms. And that's why I think is as CrossFit gets more popular, it's going to keep growing. And there's, I say probably the next five years, probably over 20,000 20, affiliates in the next five years, easily across so the it's world. Gonna, it's gonna continue going Yeah, on. we, uh, affiliation, I think CrossFit has, even though it's not a franchise, we'll just call them like franchisees, right? CrossFit has more affiliations or whatever than like McDonald's does right. in the world. Like that's, that's insane, right? It's insane. 
Um, but it's come to a point where there's going to be so many gyms that you're, they're, they're going to open and close, open and close, open and close. Like there, there's not going to be that, um, that like this is be over oversaturated because people are getting into it. It's like, cause like a gym like this is probably when all said and done, like less than 200,000 to open up, which isn't a lot to open up a business by the way. Um, but when that's all said and done, right? If you're not making money your first three or three to five years, you're going to get uh, complacent. You're going to stop caring. You're really going to let the, the gym get disheveled. You know, I've been to gyms that have 400 members and there is literally, you can do this on like one of the boxes and your hands are covered in dust because they don't clean because they just stop giving a shit. Well, I really, know, like, I really think they're, they're, just... they're going to they're gonna do that because there's so many well, of us now. The, that's good for the industry. I think, think that'd be great for the brand um, to, to really hold us accountable to a certain standard and a certain like level of education that, okay, every three years you have to advance your certification or something like that. I really hope that they do that because it's really going to weed out the people that are in it for the money or in it to help people. Like if they, like, oh, if the owner, the Greg Glass wants to come in here, like I know that if he comes in, he's not going to be like, wow, this place looks like shit. Yeah. You know, it's, it's like, he's, 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 you see my programming, see that it's competent, it's following the CrossFit method and it's staying true to what CrossFit was really founded on, the functional fitness uh, mindset. Mm -hmm. And um, and that's what I really think is, is really going to happen in the next five years. And I think that, um, gyms as a total, whether they're strength conditioning gyms, like sports specific gyms, CrossFit, or like a plant fitness or retro, there's within here, within one year, four gyms opened up. So everyone's trying to jump on that bandwagon, but it's really going to separate who's going to be, who really wants it or right. not. Because this isn't easy. Like it's been three years. I'm still not making money. Wow, Brian, you got a 7,000 square foot gym now. Yeah. Because as soon as I started making money, I reinvested it back into my gym and now I'm broke again. You know, and as an entrepreneur, you're either going to get um, grow to a certain level, like okay, this is where this is where I want to be. This is where I'm at, but I'm making money right now. So you know what? I don't really want to be there anymore. I'm almost a hangout you here. Get complacent. get complacent. You're never gonna grow, right? My goal is here. I was here, chipped up, and then I, then I made money, right? I was right here, and then I'm like, all right, next level. I'm broke again. But I'm in, I'll, I'll, I put myself in a situation that in another two years, I will be making money. But I'm thinking long term. I'm thinking, long -term. I'm not thinking short term. Right. The yeah. bubble's gonna pop. It's gonna pop. It's, it 100% is gonna pop. So I think it's, it's get mm -hmm. to a point where the government gets more involved in just like r r regulating a little bit more, just as fitness as a whole. Oh, wow. But I really think that because there's so many gyms opening up. And a lot of them have either no credentials or they have like baseline credentials and they just suck at doing what they do. And people are gonna get get hurt. Like we've, we've been open for three years. We have like next to no injuries like in my gym because we're conscientious of our athletes. Um, but it's something that it, it's, it can only, there can only be so many gyms, you know? And, and I think people treat it as like, as like the go-to industry now. Versus like, I got into because I want to help people. People are getting into because they want to make it make money, which is fine. Nothing wrong with capitalism. That's perfectly okay. But in regards to fitness, that should not be the reason why I get into it. Right. That because should be your core. that should not be your core. Because that's, that's not, that's not um, a realistic expectation to do it right. right. And really still care about your athletes. So what would, you know, what, what would be your vision, your ultimate vision you know, it could, for the gym? Oh, for me personally? Yeah, for, yeah, personally or for the gym. So, okay. so for, for me personally, I just want to be recognized for how, how special we are. Because in regards of CrossFit, we are very true to CrossFit method. Um, but how we approach it with that extra care, there are CrossFit gyms that do it. So I'm not, I cannot say that I'm the original person of it. But we're very scarce. And we're very few and far in between. So that level of care, I would, I would like us to be renowned for that um, and really hit home with a lot, with, with a lot more people because I'm, I'm in this again to help change lives. So my goal is ultimately be able to impact the most amount of lives that I can in a positive mindset and, uh, and leave a good footprint in the world after I'm gone. You know, because whether if I help some 
woman lose 80 pounds, she feels great about herself, and then the kids see her and then remember me, like mm -hmm. I, I, just, I just survived for two generations, yeah. right? Because the, the, the kids saw what I was able to do for their mom and maybe that impacts them in a certain way to help develop their life, you know? And that's important to me. Okay. You know, be able to impact the most amount of people in the, in the best possible way. So what kind of strategies do you have in, in place right now to get to that, to get to that situation? So, it's, gonna, it's not gonna happen. Oh, it's, it's not gonna happen. No, it's not gonna, it's gonna know. be a while. But right. it's, it's everything that you do, good, bad, or indifferent, should help facilitate your goals. And that's why, like, again, I don't post certain things, I don't say certain things, I don't, I don't do certain things, because I know it could be, even if, even if I don't mean it a certain way, it could be interpreted a certain way, right. right? So it's all about what people can perceive a statement as versus what you meant it as, right? So if I mean something as A, if you can interpret it in E, F, and G or three different ways, that means I should not make that statement, right? Okay. And that's something that people have to understand because all that stuff can come back to bite you in the butt, especially if you become successful, right? But sometimes you don't have that in control because 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 of the what their thoughts, their beliefs. And that's and them. that's why you have to make sure that you're always in the right in regards to the execution of the statement. Okay. You know? So no matter what I say or what I do, it's if it's with the right intention or with the right mindset, even if it's something that's disagreeable, you know it's fine as long as it doesn't affect someone in like a mindset. Like if I say I'm against gay people, I just isolated a good chunk of yeah. the population, right? I had no right to say that, mm -hmm. okay, right? It, it, that's, that's, you have to be mindful not to isolate people, um, and, but also not lose sight of what you represent and what you stand for as a person yourself, you know? So it, it's a very fine line, but you always have to, what, what, whatever I do is always facilitating um, my next level of growth because I'm I'm still not happy where I'm at. I, I still want this. I want to do one more expansion. Mm -hmm. is, is, oh, okay. is 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 my goal in the next about five years, um, and I'm never going to be satisfied. And that's what is important to be an entrepreneur okay. is the willingness to not be complacent. That's right. so hard because once you start making like some sort of income, yeah. you're just like, finally, I got something out of yeah. this. But as soon as you get that mentality, you stop growing, you stop developing, and you really stop pushing yourself to that next level. So it's really about making sure that you stay steadfast and keep on keeping on and making sure that you don't let a little success right, stop you from being successful. That's key. That's yeah. super important. That's super important. And you mentioned that you were gonna, you're, you're looking to expand, right? And, yeah, about and to, hopefully and to, five years. And to wrap things up a little bit, as we as we start getting closer to the end time, um, what advice would you give yourself, right, and other gym owners when they start opening, when they want to open up their own gym? Whether it's first so, or second. so the, the main thing, the main thing I can say to anyone that's even looking into getting into it is do your homework because if you can't do the sacrifice, if you, like if I had a family, like a kid or a wife, I probably wouldn't be able to do this. Oh, got it. So you you know, know you, you have to know where your financial status is. Again, I haven't really gotten a paycheck in three years. It's very like, I'll get a hundred bucks here, 500 bucks there. It's like, it's very sporadic depending on the ups and downs of, right. of, of memberships, right? So you have to approach it with that mindset. If you cannot sacrifice everything, this is not the business for you. It's something that it, it takes a lot out of you to be able to do it mentally and physically because emotionally being there for people is, is tough. Right. You know, it takes a lot out of you, especially when you're going through your own shit yourself, yeah. you know? So um, the ma main advice is like look at who you are, what you're trying to accomplish. If you have millions of dollars, you open up a gym and fail, whatever, that's not a big deal. If this fails, I'm screwed, right? right? I, I, don't, I don't come from a 1% family, I'm, I'm middle class. You know, I don't, I don't have that fallback of mom and dad to bail me out of it. If I go bankrupt, it's on me. Right. My parents will love me, but they can't get me out of the hole. I, I dug myself, right? So it's figuring out where you are financially, um, what you're willing to sacrifice, and if you're not willing to make the long-term struggle, years of struggle, not not the right field for you. Okay. It's not worth it. Unless you come from a well-off right. family. 
Okay, see, I was not expecting an answer like that. I was kind of expecting like the regular. Oh, like, everyone can do it. No, yeah. no, fuck that, or, dude. Or, or kind of like, yeah, you want to make sure that you're in the right location, that you are whatever. You more know, than, right more than anything else, like more than anything else, it's your determination and your drive to want to do it. If you cannot, like there, I can't even count how many times I want to close the gym my first mm. year. I can't even count how many times I want to close it my second year. I'm just like, I'm screw this, I'm done with this, it's too much stress, too much expectations, I'm not making any money, da 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 Like, I would have closed it a dozen times by now, you know, but I kept to where I, what my mindset was, and I expanded to a three times the size of where I was, you know, because I kept to it. But I wanted, I wanted to close it 30 freaking times before I did this, and I was like, you know, it's not worth it, it's not worth it, it's not worth it, and then, I push myself to the next level. And that's what you have to be to be successful, especially within a gym mindset. And also because you have you know your why. Your yeah. why is I wanna leave an impact. Yeah. You know, I wanna change people's lives mm. essentially. So it's like you know, it's like this is what I wanna do and you're gonna do it. Yeah, hundred ten percent. And that and that's what I can give advice wise to anybody. Awesome. Um, so if anyone were to reach out to you, you know, or your location, mm -hmm. um, how can they reach to you? Um, they can uh, reach out to us on asdccrossfit.com um, or they can email me at asdccrossfit at gmail.com. Um, we have a Facebook page, Instagram. Just You, you can look us up. Um, I, always, I always respond back by the end of the day okay. um, with, with all inquiries uh, awesome. about our establishment. Awesome. All right, Brian. Well, it was a pleasure having you. That was fun. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, of course. And uh, we got to catch up again. Yeah, dude, that was fun.